this will be the last video for the introduction to econometrics. So the last topics cover the most advanced concept in the time series regression and forecasting model. So I will just basically introduce what they are rather than proving all the steps. So maybe in the next time I will upload some advanced concept in the especially for the panel data and time series. So I will try to prove them if in case I have those videos. Okay, let's get started. Lastly, we talk about the vector auto regression model, in short, VAR model. Second, we will do the multi period forecasting. Next, we will talk about the order of integration and the concept of co integration. Finally, we will talk, uh, talk about the volatility problems and how to model the volatilities. Okay, first, we will talk about the VAR model. VAR model is basically the extension of the AR model. In AR model, say we will have the yt, so this is some parameter of maybe beta 0 plus beta 1 yt minus 1 plus up to beta p yt minus p. And in VAR model, V is stand for vector. Vector is a series of variables. So here, VAR just means that we have two dependent variables need to be explained and each of the dependent variables depends on the lack of both variables so here we will modify by yt be a function of beta 1 0 plus beta 1 1 the lag of y up to the period t then plus the gamma 1 1 xt minus 1 and up to gamma 1 p xt minus p plus uit so here we incorporate the p lag of y and p lag of x so for the x variable again it depends on it is beta 2 o plus beta 2 1 times yt minus 1 plus up to beta 2 p yt minus p then plus gamma 2 1 xt minus 1 plus up to gamma 2 p xt minus p and plus u 2 t Okay. Well, in fact, you can capture this in the vector form. Okay, so you can write it like y t x t equal to the constant plus. Then you write down the functions. So this may be beta 1 1 beta 1 2 up to beta 1 p then here beta 2 1 up to beta 2 p and this is y so okay this is the 2 by p matrix then you need to have the p by 1 matrix so this is y t then up to Uh, yt minus 1 of the yt minus p then plus the gamma term gamma 1 1 gamma 1 2 up to gamma 1 p and gamma 2 1 gamma 2 p up to, up to gamma 2 p and this is again the matrix form finally plus the error term okay so again in VALP model we also need to we also can determine the number of lag. So in AR model, we use the BIC, AIC. Again, here we can use the BIC and AIC. So the BIC just equal to log times the determinant of this. So this is the covariance matrix of the error term. Okay, you need to measure the covariance of, of the error here then plus the k times kp plus 1 so the formula is similar to the BIC in AR model so here we just modify it a little bit we need to calculate the covariance matrix of VAR error and we need to change here to be to add the k okay so say so this error is the k times k covariance matrix so it depends on the number of the variables here. 
Okay, so this is uh, the introduction of VAR regressions, VAR model. So next we'll talk about the multi-period forecast. So previously we just do one period forecast. Actually we can do multi-period forecast. Okay, so previously we do one period forecast. Given the present period T, we forecast the T plus one period. So this is beta zero hertz plus beta one hertz yt plus beta 2 hat yt minus 1 so here we don't need to put a hat because it is already realized plus up to beta p hat yt minus p plus 1 for multi-period it means that we can also forecast the two periods later than this period so this is equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat here we will put yt plus 1 given t hat okay because t plus 1 is not realized we need to estimate it then plus beta 2 hat yt plus up to beta p yt minus p plus 2 and so on and so forth yt plus 3 hat is equal to beta 1 hat beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat yt plus 2 given t hat plus beta 2 hat yt plus 1 t hat then plus beta 3 hat yt and up to beta p yt plus p plus 3 okay yt minus p plus 3 so these are the multi-period forecasts and you can also do the multi-period forecast in in the form of VAR say yt plus 2 hat okay given t is equal to beta 1 0 hat plus beta 1 1 hat y t plus 1 given the time t then hat then beta 1 2 hat y t plus up to beta 1 p hat y t minus p plus 2 again in var you will still have the lack of x okay so you need to add gamma 1 1 hat xt plus 1 given t hat plus gamma 1 2 hat xt plus up to gamma 1 p hat xt minus p plus 2 okay so these are how you model the multi-period forecast you can even do the forecast of yt plus p minus 1 something like that okay just replace the previous leg to be the estimator then you can do so first we'll talk about the order of integration so if the yt okay if the yt is in the integrated of order one so we can write it as i bracket one okay it means that the difference of yt is stationary okay so yt is not stationary it's non-stationary but if it's integrated of order one it means that difference of yt is stationary and if yt has a property that integrated of yt is of order two so we can write it as i2 so this means that the difference of the difference of yt is stationary and if this integrator of order d so we can write is i d so that means d times difference of yt is stationary well as you know if it's not stationary you, you cannot do the hypothesis testing conversion interval easily but this is the way that how you can model the non-stationary model to be the stationary and you can do OLS easily in this case so okay this is the random walk model so this is uh, if this I1 so the random walk model is something like this okay so this is non-stationary because here beta 1 is 1 okay so if you want to turn it into stationary, you need to difference it. Then in this case, this is stationary and you can do hypothesis testing using the second equations.
okay and if you want to test uh, whether this is the orders of integration one or two you can do something called uh, the Dickie Fuller GLS test but this is quite advanced I would not talk mention this here so next is the core integrations but actually each part of this video one up to five it can it can be more than one hour lectures so here I just briefly introduce the concepts okay next is the co integrations so the meaning of co integration is that okay say XT both um, well maybe start by YT okay YT it is in I1 integrated of order 1 and XT is also integrated of order 1 okay they are non stationary but maybe in some sense okay yt minus some theta of xt can be i0 okay you can minus something for the i1 and you will get the stationary concept so it is possible that there exists some theta to turn the i1 into i0 and for the xt also if it is i1 you may find some say gamma okay and turn the the whole process into i0 so you need to turn the turn everything into stationary before you do the prediction forecasting or uh, to see the multiplier effects okay so how to test whether there is a co-integration whether two are so okay if there exists some theta that can make the I want to be I0 we say that X and Y are co-integrated okay so how to test whether they are co-integrated so let's take a look at the VAR P model okay so if you want to test whether they are co-integrated so first just copy the original VAR P model the setup Okay, so you add the change of yt. Well, because it's i1, so we are going to test. We do the first difference. Okay. Then after you add all the y, you need to you also need to add the x. Okay, so after you write the original VALP model, you need to add some alpha i, okay, as a, so then times yt minus 1 minus theta xt minus 1. So you change the VALP model by adding one more term here. And again, for the xt equation, you need to add some alpha t. And do the same things okay so the reason of adding is is you want to see whether this term is significant okay then you will use the test called EGADF test to see whether the theta is statistically significant that different from zero and you compare some critical value to see whether this exists a theta to make the i1 to be i0 okay so again the com computation of the critical value is again very difficult so i will skip it in the some advanced videos okay finally let's talk about the volatility So in doing the forecast, maybe the shares or the mutual funds, okay, you need to also consider the volatilities. So it's 
for some examples, you may come across that okay, in some times the volatility is very, very low. So maybe something like this, and sometimes maybe very high, fluctuating, okay. And you can see the variance of this volatility is not constant. In this case, we will call this volatility clustering. It means that the volatility can be low in some time and very high in some times. Okay. Well, maybe some similar concept is, is mean, meaning that this is heteroscedular districts rather than homoscedular districts. Okay. So in time series, you have two models. We have two models to modify this problem. The first one is called a autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity, in short, arch. Okay, the arch model. So just consider this ADL model. Okay, so we don't know whether this is the what is the performance of these error terms. Okay. Therefore, you will do some things to test the variance, the volatilities of the error terms. Okay. So you will also estimate this. The volatility is some alpha zero plus alpha one. U T minus one the previous error plus alpha two the two period before the error term okay so this is a way to model or to forecast the presence error with respect to the past error okay so this is the arch model. So after four years, the another economist, the the other economic Chichian, developed a generalized arch model, and we call this the gauge model. Okay, so the difference is that apart from the original arch P. HP model, so because we have the P lag of that, okay. So we also consider the volatilities. Okay, so we also consider the own legs and the legs of the square error. Okay, so these two are the models to deal with the problem of the volatilities clusterings. So the one of the benefits of using the gauge instead of the arch model is that the gauge can capture slowly. The change, the slowly changing of the variance with fewer terms than arch. Okay, but both can measure the, both can measure, the variance, of the volatility of returns. So both are very useful. Okay, so this is the whole introduction of the econometrics.